taking a laptop apart may be only slightly easier than putting it together. It's a hands-on job for dozens of employees at a recycling company just north of Washington. Julie Keough is co-founder and CEO of eStructures, where all kinds of electronics like monitors are disassembled and recycled. They're going to take apart that outer plastic shell that's going to go to a particular bin to be recycled with plastics. It's going to get bailed up. Um, they're going to pull apart any kind of working, uh, not working, but any kind of electronic circuitry, if you will. And that's going to go to our shredder, and we're going to diminish the size and scope so we can send that to a smelter. So that's going to go and be smelted for the gold, the silver, the palladium, the copper content. And then there's the actual CRT, or the cathode ray tube. Now that cathode ray tube has uh, various components within it. It has a, um, a stainless steel electron gun. That's the piece that actually sh shoots or fires the electron beam. And it has a funnel. So that funnel, if you will, has a high content of lead. So we need to take that lead and take that to someone who can process that lead. Not all recyclers are the same. Some, like e are certified by third parties to meet epa endorsed standards for safe and responsible handling of e-waste. So let's take, for example, um, a part of a laptop, okay, and we take apart that laptop and um, our auditor comes in every year, we get a surveillance audit to make sure we're doing the right thing, and he says, show me what you're doing with your mercury tubes. So we will have to go and um, pull the documentation for how much poundage we sent to that particular downstream partner, and then we'll also show that they received it and then they processed it. So not only do we have to show what, who we sent it to, but that they handled it appropriately. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency estimates more than 80 percent of U.S. electronics end up in the trash rather than at facilities like e structures In 2007, that trash was estimated to be more than 1.5 million metric tons. But what about all those computers, televisions, and cell phones that are taken to a recycler? Jim Puckett of the Basil Action Network says much of it goes overseas, where low-paid workers try to extract the more valuable and sometimes toxic components. And that's the real sad part of this, is that it's so much deception going on. People call themselves recyclers, but 80% of that material that's delivered to recyclers in the United States just goes offshore immediately. U.S. lawmakers recently initiated a bill that would make it illegal to dump e-waste in developing countries. Although the bill has the support of several major computer manufacturers, it is opposed by other industry groups, including the Institute of Scrap Recycling Industries. It says a ban on legitimate trade of used and end-of-life electronics would hurt business and backfire against efforts to improve and sustain recycling operations abroad. But Puckett says the primary destination for e-waste is West Africa and Asia, particularly China, where the recycling process is neither safe nor environmentally sound. It's just done on the street and open burning, uh, cracking of monitors with hammers, uh, burning of the circuit boards to get the solder off so they can remove the chips, throwing chips into acid baths, flushing all the acids into the river. There have been scientists that have followed in our footsteps when we first revealed what was going on there and now the data is in that there's tremendous health impacts. Some of the highest levels of dioxins ever recorded the groundwater in this area called Guayu in China is completely shot. Likewise, in Ghana, they're finding precursors to cancer. They're finding high levels of lead in the blood of children, etc. Responsible recycling means more than just taking out the hard drive. If laptops can be repaired, Keo says e-structures will fix them with parts coming from other recycled units. But for those electronics at the end of their life, every bit of metal, glass, plastic, and wiring is collected and bundled for further recycling. We're going to harvest everything out that we can. Stuff that needs to get shredded will go to the shredder. If it's an LCD screen on your laptop, for example, that's going to need to be taken apart. It's going to be backlit typically by fluorescent tubes. Those fluorescent tubes contain the mercury that you mentioned. So we need to make sure that when we're taking apart that unit, these tubes stay intact. Those tubes go to a specialized recycler, while the monitor's glass may go to another. Every scrap of metal and plastic are also collected and shipped to other facilities for further processing. We have our finished bales that are um, of plastics that will go out to be pelletized, made into new injection mold plastics you'd find in every household, uh, toys, games, also you'll have it in auto parts. e structure says it sent nearly 10 million kilograms of glass, aluminum, copper, steel, plastic and paper to be recycled into other items last year. That's just a drop in the bucket compared to e-waste generated worldwide, which the UN Environment Program estimates is growing by about 40 million tons per year. Rebecca Ward, VOA News.